political debate over immigration. And the legal turf war is leaving those kids stuck in limbo. Tonight, I-Team investigator Katie Legron here with brand new reporting on the national story she broke first and the exclusive interview on how the political feud is leaving those kids facing a very uncertain future. This is video of a recent reunion between a dad and his two sons. The boys, ages 4 and 14, had arrived in the U.S. without their parents three weeks ago. Their mom sent them here after the Mexican cartel kidnapped an older sibling, then threatened the family. Their story is not unique. But the faith-based group that cared for these boys and have cared for hundreds of other unaccompanied migrant children just like them. I cannot believe this. I, I, I can't. Continues to deal with an unknown future. Doesn't make any sense. It doesn't. Joanne Ortiz recruits foster families for the Bethany Christian Services in Orlando. Why aren't you accepting more kids? Because of the executive order. Is that the only reason? Yes, that's the only reason why we're not accepting kids. The group is among the more than dozen providers in Florida stuck in limbo after the governor ordered Florida's Department of Children and Families not to renew the licenses of shelters and care providers who temporarily care for unaccompanied migrant children as part of a long-standing federal program. <laughs> Bethany provides foster care to these children once they enter the U.S., but before they're reunited with family or vetted sponsors here. <laughs> After months of waiting for the state to renew the licenses of their foster families, those licenses were renewed last month. But in recent emails we obtained, DCF appears to suggest the group still can't accept any more unaccompanied kids. Noticed you were placing children. Please ensure you refer to the executive order and are following it, a DCF staffer said. They're renewed, but they can't take the kids that they're licensed to take? Exactly. So what's the point of that? It's the latest confusing chapter in the governor's efforts to crack down on illegal immigration into the state by targeting, in part, shelters and providers who are contracted by the federal government to temporarily care for kids as part of a decades-old federal law. In a letter to the feds last month, DeSantis's general counsel accused the federal government of participating in a, quote, human trafficking scheme, blaming the Biden administration for pursuing open border policies and lax immigration enforcement, sending minors who are, quote, poorly vetted. As a result, DCF can no longer participate until significant changes are made in federal immigration enforcement, the letter states. For Bethany Christian, the letter only adds to the confusion over what's next. Everybody's in a waiting period. Yes, everybody is. If providers start accepting children again, they could technically be defying the governor's orders. Is what the governor is doing here, is it legal? So that's going to be the big question in front of us is, is it, is it permissible? Melissa Morantes is executive director for the Orlando Center for Justice, which represents immigrants, including unaccompanied children. She says the predicament facing shelters for unaccompanied kids in Florida is unprecedented and legal fights could run the gamut. You have federal law, you have state law and federal supersede state. You have the division of church and state. You're talking about constitutional issues. You're talking about children's rights. So all of it's gonna come into play. It's just gonna be a question of, can they work it out, find a happy medium? Will this just go away? Are you concerned about breaking the law, violating the governor's orders? I'm concerned about the safety of the children. Bethany Christian has just one unaccompanied child still in its care. We have a center prepared to receive our children. We have staff that is passionate about serving the children. And there we are in the center with no children. But the group remains hopeful. More will come and eventually be reunited with family, just as the program was created to do. A spokesperson from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services tells me they are examining all their legal options to ensure these providers can continue taking care of unaccompanied minors here. Katie Legrone, back to you.